Okay. Professor Alari, thank you so much for having me here. It is so great to be back in University of Florida, and thank you for accepting uh, my request to have an interview with you. It is really a pleasure. Um, and uh, if you allow me, in the next 15 minutes, I will ask you a couple of questions to get your insight about what uh, mathematics means to you, what a mathematician is as a profession, as a professional, and some peripheral questions around that. So for that, I don't want to take so much of your time. I'm just going to put a timer, and when the timer runs off, we will just say thanks. Or you're going to kick me out of your office, one of the two. So I should, I always start with what, as a profession, what, as a profession, what uh, mathematics means to you? What, is, what entails to be a mathematician? Yeah, so first of all, my feeling about mathematics in general is that I think it is the finest way to sharpen one's uh, intellect. It doesn't matter whether you are in physics or whether you are in economics uh, or in mathematics itself, whether you are in any subject, the finest way to actually uh, hone in your intellectual skills is, I think, by thinking about mathematical questions. So I think the training that mathematics gives is absolutely essential. And what I like about mathematics, and that's the reason that I'm in it, is that uh, it is for the elegance of the subject. I mean, there is an enormous beauty in the logical structure of the subject, the uh, clarity with which many things are done. <laughs> that's what attracts me uh, to the field. Uh, and um, uh, that's what always had attracted me from my school days when I first learned what it is to do proofs when I started with Euclidean geometry mm -hmm. in the ninth grade and I immediately fell in love with mathematics at that point. Maybe I should interrupt and ask, uh, your father is a really prominent physicist. Uh, how did he feel about you choosing mathematics over physics? Well, he actually had uh, had always emphasized that even in physics, mathematical beauty and mathematical consistency are uh, paramount importance. And in fact, you know, this kind of um, uh, view of physics has also been expressed by many of the greatest physicists, such as, for instance, Dirac, mm -hmm. who said that physics equations representing physical laws and physical entities must have a mathematical beauty to it. Because mathematics is, I think, more art than science. I'm not saying it's not science, but people don't think of the artistic and aesthetic beauty of mathematics. So he was not at all disappointed that I took to pure mathematics. Mm -hmm. In fact, he was quite happy about it. Of course. Yeah. So, uh, and then I feel also that it is very important to uh, impart uh, mathematical knowledge to the public as much as you can, and that's one of the reasons why I get great pleasure in teaching. So, it's, so the research is a personal thing, mm -hmm. but the teaching is something where you feel that you're doing some service to the community by educating people mm -hmm. about wonderful things in mathematics. So it gives me great satisfaction. And it's not the only thing that you do. You do research, you do teaching, Correct. but also you have taken a lot of administrative positions in this university as well as other universities. Right. Um, you have been an author, and you have actually founded the Raman Jan Journal. Right. How did that came about? Yeah, so first thing is that I have always felt, and this is something I, I uh, probably this idea I received from my father, it is one thing to do good research, it's a very important to do good research and make contributions to the advancement of knowledge. But equally important is also to do something to the profession. Because unless the profession is healthy, people will not take to that line of work in good numbers. So the, the average person is not going to take to mathematics unless there are many wonderful things happening in the mathematical world. We're not just talking in terms of proving theorems. Yeah. Therefore, it is important to serve the profession in many ways. And so I did serve as an administrator for the math department here. You were here when I was chair. 
And at that time, I tried to do whatever I could to elevate the, uh, uh, the uh, reputation of the department in the world. But now coming to the Ramanujan Journal, so it was in 1987 uh, when I went to the Ramanujan Centennial, that was an eye-opener for me. In, because mathematicians around the world gathered in, at that time in Madras to uh, pay homage to this unique uh, genius in, in the mathematical firmament. And it was a very proud moment for all of us in India. <laughs> but one of the things I felt was, great as the Ramanujan Centennial was, and there is no two uh, way doubts about it, it was still an event in a single point in time. So the centennial is not going to repeat. Yeah. So I asked myself, can we do something which will be like a permanent memorial to Ramanujan, <laughs> but at the same time, keep the mathematics of Ramanujan alive and connect it to the vast body of, of mathematics that is happening all over the world. And so the idea to launch the Ramanujan journal uh, came up. And so that is how I got into this idea to launch the journal. But I needed the support of uh, uh, the stalwarts in the field to launch it. <laughs> and so the first three whom I approached were Bruce Byrne, George Andrews, and Richard Askey. Mm -hmm. And once I had their support, then it was, uh, it, it took some effort, but I got the support of a good number of mathematicians, and the journal was launched in 1997. It is not just about Ramanujan's work, but it is about areas influenced by Ramanujan. So it has focus, but because it is not just about Ramanujan's work, but areas influenced by Ramanujan, it is also broad enough. And, and therefore the journal has been quite successful. Yeah, that, that is actually, you're completely right. That is not just the Raman transfer. But Correct. I have, I have seen many uh, articles that is not directly a Q series or that is not right. directly modular forms that also right. appeared in the Roman Trans Journal. Right. And it is nowadays a really successful journal. But before maybe we talk about its success, um, right. the browser in a backlash. Because there's always some skepticism when a new thing comes about. Right. So it's, I'm glad you asked this question. Uh, so even though I had this idea, I had my own hesitation whether. Mm -hmm this is really a, 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 a proper thing to do, uh, or how significant this was going to be. So I actually sent out letters in the beginning, even before the launch of the journal, to 100 number theorists and analysts around the world, <laughs> just asking for their opinion. What do you think if we launch a journal like this? What do you think would be its place in, in the mathematical world? Uh, do you think this will fill a need? Do you think this is relevant? And there were maybe 10, 15 percent of this group wrote back saying, we don't need a new journal. Uh, oh, I and was then, thinking that 10, 10 percent maybe only responded. And no, that's no, no, no. So some people said, you know, said, but then there were a good number who said, this will actually fill a niche because papers in certain areas are sort of scattered in the literature. So for yeah. instance, if you take papers on special functions or Q, you may find it in the Proceedings AMS, or you may find it in the Siam Journal. You may f it will be scattered in the literature, which there's nothing wrong. But having a journal like this uh, will be an attraction for people in certain areas to actually focus and publish in this journal. So in the future, yeah. what might happen is you might say, "Oh, you want a major theorem on partitions? Go to the Ramanujan Journal." Or you want a major uh, theorem on transformations of hypergeometric series. It, it probably is in the Ramanujan Journal. So it, it fills a niche. And there were more people who responded saying that a journal like this will fill a niche and a need than people who expressed uh, some sort of concern. So I felt confident that we should go ahead and uh, launch this journal. Naturally, the first set of editors that we included were those who responded most enthusiastically <laughs> saying, we need a journal like this, because yeah. those are the people who are going to work for the journal. Yeah. So, so, so it was good to get the, uh, what I should say, the endorsement of, uh, of, the, of the mathematical community to launch the journal. But it was not without mm -hmm. people expressing concern. No. Yeah. yeah, that's what I was thinking, that there would be some right. concern. And 
uh, you mentioned Bruce Berndt uh, that you have contacted, uh, I believe International Journal of Number Theory, which yeah. he launched, uh, if I'm right. It must have existed at that point too. So there was No, the International Journal of Number Theory actually came later. Oh, so maybe what actually it's... happened was, this was originally launched by Kluwer. Mm -hmm. And Bruce Berndt was what we call as a coordinating editor. Mm -hmm. So he took a very active part in this, uh, in this journal. Initially, this journal had only four issues, yeah. one volume, four issues, each about 100 pages. And therefore, it could not handle the volume of submissions that we were getting. And Bruce was actually on the editorial board. Mm -hmm. So he saw the backlog building up. And at that time, World Scientific was expanding. Uh, and World Scientific wanted um, a journal in number theory. Uh, I forget in what connection, but Bruce had some contact with World Scientific, and they approached him and asked him if he would, I think, be interested in launching a journal. Uh, you should get the precise story from him. But uh, then the International Journal of Number Theory was launched. But because he became the editor-in-chief of that journal, mm -hmm. for conflict of interest, he could not be the coordinating editor of this journal. So he stepped down, yeah. but he remained on the editorial board because not to have Bruce and Richard Askey and George Andrews on the editorial board would not Ramanjan, be proper yeah. with the name Ramanujan Jones. So he kindly agreed to be on the editorial board. He was a very active member, uh -huh. but he didn't want to have a greater level of decision making and responsibility in the journal because of his commitment to the International mm -hmm. Journal of Number Theory. But so it came later, yeah. actually. But you see, I just learned that. I, I thought the International Journal of Number, number Theory was a yeah. little bit earlier. But in a sense that Ramanjan Journal also well, gave birth to this. In a, in a well, sense. But the thing is that uh, Kluwer and, and Springer merged. Yeah. And once that happened, the, um, at that time it was Anne Costant of Springer who, who took over this journal. The journal was launched when John Martindale was in charge of it and David Larner from Kluwer. But once they merged, Anne Costant took over and she said, well, if there is this backlog, mm -hmm. we should simply have more issues and larger, more, more pages per, per issue. So the journal has steadily grown, and now we are publishing nine issues in three volumes of 225 pages per issue. I'm not counting pages, but I'm just yeah. letting you know two things. It's, it's the fact that we have got very many excellent submissions, mm -hmm. and uh, that justifies the expansion of the journal. And we are not just accepting every paper. That the rejection true. rate is about two-thirds. Yeah. So, it's you know we are accepting good papers. Yeah, yeah, definitely yeah. the quality of from yeah. journal is yeah. up there, yeah. Yeah. and there are much worse journals that right. And also, you know, I think people understand even you know it, 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 uh, So this is really the, what has really happened to the journal. Yeah. So it has grown to become a very respectable journal, Bible and that is too. due to the work of so many members of the community who are working with me. Definitely. Um, I was going to say, you're the editor-in-chief, but your managing editor is actually Frank Carvin. Well, he, yes. So, he is managing editor, and uh, so I consult uh, Frank uh, for many uh, things relating to technical aspects of the journal. Yeah. But I still handle uh, all the submissions. I decide which uh, editor will deal with which paper. Mm -hmm. And I actually, I'm probably the only person who does this, I actually correct every page proof. Ah, so if you have paper in the Ramanujan Journal and you have corrected your page proof, it doesn't go online. I look at all the page proofs individually <laughs> and then check it again. Reconfirm <laughs> only then it grows online because I just don't want any uh, mistakes of any sort. I understand That's all. That. I mean, but I'm not correcting mathematics. Yeah, of course. I'm, not. I'm just looking at the general. That's the referee's paper. job to check. Yeah. So That's the author's yeah. job, the referee's job. But it's, it's, it's given me a lot of uh, personal satisfaction of service to the community. Yeah. But I was going to say, so you're writing papers yourself, you're doing research, you're uh, actually advising students, and on top of that you have your Roman journal, plus you're writing books. Yeah. What is uh, what is a working day for you? How do you work in your element? Yeah, so I remember when I... Uh, when I accepted the position to be editor-in-chief of the Ramanujan Journal, and it happened in 97, mm -hmm. and in 98 I became chairman of the department, I, I got a letter of uh, congratulations and support from George Andrews. But then he cautioned me and said, I 
I'm a little bit worried how you can <laughs> handle all this because of the enormity of the work. Yeah. Uh, yes. So my day is really full. Uh, I, I, I have very little time for you know general relaxation, but I do relax. Thank you again for <laughs> sparing you know, this time for. <laughs> yeah. No, but it is yeah. true. My day is my my day is really full. Mm -hmm. um, it it to to some extent I can say that the paper writing frequency has gone down uh, simply because I have so many things to do. But then I take co-authors. Mm -hmm. um, when I was chairman, uh, Alex Berkovich was my co-author, and I think we wrote maybe half a dozen or more papers. And no. uh, uh, maybe we can go a tiny bit more, but yeah, uh, we can. So, uh, but on the other hand, uh, uh, as uh, as Hardy said. When you grow older, he didn't actually say that you should stop doing research, but because of experience, you can do things where the experience can be put to use. So my experience is being put to use in the fact that I run a journal, the fact that I chair a prize committee, that I write books, mm -hmm. I guide students, and so on. All this comes with experience in your field of work. So you know, that also, I think, is very important. It is the kind of a print that you leave, not just through your theorems, but through other things that you do. I understand. Uh, yeah. And again, thank you so much for actually sparing this time for me. And we didn't even come to half of it. Uh, I, I couldn't ask you how having an average, num uh, average number one feels. I couldn't ask you how working with Basil Gordon was. Maybe we should have a second second one of this. You are here for another week, aren't you? I am. So if you want, we can discuss some other things. Try to find the time, maybe sure. next week. No yeah. problem. Thank you so much. Okay.